Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a new video. Today I'm doing a match preview of Shamrock Rovers versus St. Patrick's Athletic. So before we start this video, if you haven't seen my six things we learned about Shamrock Rovers 2, Derry City 1, make sure you go and watch that before this. And then in this one we're going to be talking about Pats for a few minutes, talk about Rovers last game. Then we're going to go into our predicted lineup and our score prediction. So just before we start the video, 57% of my viewers are not subscribed. So if you could subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. So let's get into this. Shamrock Rovers will be playing Pats at Richmond Park, so in St. Pats. Uh, will that be as much of an advantage? Yes, because Pats will know the pitch, but no fans. So not too much of an advantage. We're away once again, away to Derry last week. Um, we're back at home then the week after. I'm not sure who we're against. I'll, I'll have to look that up, but... We're focusing on Pats for the moment. Uh, Pats in their last game played Finn Harps. In their last league game they beat Finn Harps, think 2-0. But in their last game they played in the FAI Cup, it was against Finn Harps. And they lost 1-0. Now to lose against any team is obviously rough. But losing against Finn Harps make it, makes it that bit more you know, annoying. Because Finn Harps are now in the, like, the one team you would beat in the league. But fair play to Finn Harps beating Pats. Uh, I didn't watch the game, if you did let me know was it a close match. But yeah, Finn Harps beat St. Pats, which I think was a, a shock to most League of Ireland fans. We're through to the second round of the FA Cup. We got a buy-in or something. There wasn't enough teams. Worked out something like that. But we've gotten Cork City. Um, Cork scored a last-minute winner there, I'm pretty sure, in the Cup. Uh, was it the Cup or the League? Tell me down below. I think it was the Cup. But um, I don't know his name. It was, it was a good goal, though. Last-minute winner. Cork will be high on confidence coming into that game. Uh, we will be doing a match preview for that when it comes around. I think it's the 29th of August, I could be wrong. We are at top of the league, which I'd love to say every week. Um, hopefully I can say it every week for the rest of the year. Uh, we're on 21 points and then Bows are behind us on 18. Dundalk are very close to Bohemians. So we cannot forget about Dundalk in this title race. But for now, Bohemians is our main worry. Pats, on the other hand, are in 5th place. They're on 10 points and so are Shelburne, who are 1 position below them on goal difference. But Pats have a game in hand, so if they get a point or win this match, they'll go up again. But I don't think they'll win this match, and I have to say that because I'm a Rovers fan, but I genuinely think Rovers will win. But we'll leave the score prediction for the end. We have a match in hand, and that's the match against Pats tonight. So if we win this, we go six points clear of Bohemians, which would be great for you know a couple of weeks in or a couple of games into the league. I think we're what ten games in now, maybe uh, coming up to the ten game mark. So we're we're in a good position to win the league. But I know Dundalk fans will slag us and Bells, 13 points clear last year. But that I think Dundalk had like two games in hand over us, maybe three. So at the moment, six points clear. Um, all games will be played, all equal games played. So it should make it an interesting league this year. Um, hopefully Shamrock Rovers can pull out and win. But hopefully it's interesting. But yeah, we're going to get into my predicted lineup Now last week I got everyone right. Except Lafferty, I went with I think Frugia instead, but everyone else I got right. I've made two changes to that for this week. Uh, Bradley isn't changing much; it's only the left wing back spot that he has been changing. But I've made one different change today. I want to go through that now. But starting off in goal is the wall himself, Alan Manis. I think against uh, Derry we saw how good he is. Like I know people are saying he's getting on, but. I think he's the best keeper in the league. I, I don't think anyone can say otherwise. They say James Talbot is decent. To be honest, I'm not mad about him. But I think Alan Manis is heads and shoulders above James Talbot. Um, but yeah, in goal, Alan Manis, the brick wall himself. We're going to go with a five at the back again, or a three at the back, whatever you'd like to say. We've gone with Pico, Grace and Joey O'Brien once again. Very solid against Derry there uh, on Sunday. I think they can do a great job again this week against Pats. Pats are quite physical and so, are, so is their defence. So, yeah, Pico uh, getting the goal last week. He'll be on a confidence boost. So now him and the uh, league race have a little battle for who can score more goals throughout the season. Pretty sure Pico is on top of that. Um, so I'm guessing they'll be slagging each other off in their DMs or whatever they're doing. Uh, Joey O'Brien, on the other hand, did some amazing balls over the top to Lafferty. I talked about that in the six things we learned video last week. If you haven't, if you haven't seen that, have a look at that. But Joey O'Brien, I think, once again, another player that's aging a bit, but he's still got like I'd say two, three years in him. So Joey O'Brien will be starting alongside Lee Grace and Pico Lopez in the back. Moving on to right wing back and left wing back now. Ronan Finn's my favourite Rovers player. He did a video with me, and he's an absolute legend. Last week against Derry, I didn't think he was as much involved as we would have liked, but. Is Reese Marshall ready yet? I think we're just giving him little tasters at the end of each game. So I'm going to stick with Ronan Finn for this match. 
Um, honestly, I think he's better in midfield, but I think we haven't got the space in midfield at the moment. So we're going to play him right wing back. Um, also on the left, this is where I would make one of my changes. I'm going to bring in Danny Lafty. I was impressed with his runs throughout the game against Derry. He came off around 70 minutes in, but Joey O'Brien and Danny Lafty, the, the balls over the top to Lafty, were very good. Hopefully, Lafty had a great game on Sunday, but hopefully we can get maybe an assist or, you know, a good pullback from him throughout the game on Sunday against Pats. But I've gone with Danny Lafty. Now, Frugia came on with 20 minutes to go against Derry, and I have to say I was impressed by Frugia. If he, if he starts like that, I'd probably play Frugia, but I, I think Frugia just needs that bit of confidence and then he'll be flying. But I'm going to go with Danny Lafty for this game. Into the two defensive midfielders, once again I've gone with Gary O'Neill and Aaron McInef. I think both of them played very solid against Derry. Uh, McInef obviously getting my man of the match and a lot of people in the comments agreed with me. So woo, I think Aaron McInef has to start. Same with Gary O'Neill, obviously Greg Bulger out for the season unfortunately. Um, I've seen reports of the broken leg but I've seen shin injuries as well. So I'm not fully sure what happened if anyone knows the in-depth details let me know down below. But yeah, Gary O'Neill and Aaron McInef. Great player, Aaron McInef, I'm in. We gave Aaron McInef man of the match in the match against Pats in the six things we learned. And I think that was fully deserved. You guys in the comments seem to agree with it. And um, Gary O'Neill as well, very solid at uh, the defensive mid role. So I think I'll start both of them in this video. And then the two midfielders just in front of them. We make one change here from last week's starting 11. That is Graham Burke coming in for Dylan Watts. And also Jack Byrne has to stay there. Now, the reason I'm taking Watts out, uh, I gave him a blue... Did I give him the blue box against... It was a Finn Harps. I'm not, it was him and Jack Byrne. I don't know which one I gave. But Dylan Watts was really good against Finn Harps. On Sunday there last week, he didn't have a look in, to be completely honest. Which was a shame, because we know what he's capable of. But I think he just needs a week's rest, and then we'll get him back into the team. Uh, Greenberg came on for about 20 minutes. And I think he was one of the reasons we won the game in the end. He brought a lot of energy to the rover side and the, the bit of flair Graham Burke can flick on like that is amazing so I'm, I know Graham Burke won't last a full 90 minutes we'll take him off probably 60 minutes in for Watts but Watts is a great player to bring off bring on off the bench so yeah we're going to go with Gra Graham Burke and then obviously Jack Byrne the magician himself wasn't too involved in the Derry match he, he got one assist I think he got the assist for the Pico goal um, but I think we know how good Jack is. So we'll start with Graham Burke and Jack Byrne, just behind the striker, who is once again Aaron Green. Now, once again, I thought on Sunday, if you didn't watch the six things we learned, I talked about Green going wide all the time, and I'd like to know if it's tactical or not, because we know Aaron Green, he's a great runner. He runs after every ball you give him, which we have to admire, presses the defence all the time. But when we get on the ball, you watch Giroud, he comes short and most strikers and pass about drawing a defender out, leaving spaces in behind to penetrate. Unfortunately against uh, Derry and the match before that against Finn Harps, Aaron Green has been going out wide so we have no option to do that, we can't drag a defender out. Uh, whether that's tactical from Bradley telling them to do that or not, I don't know but I think it could be looked at from Bradley. Uh, we'll see if they did look at that tomorrow against Pats. But... Dean Williams came on as well actually he was very good got, got, I'm going to give him that goal he hit the post then it went off uh, an OG off one of the Derry players but I'd love to give Dean Williams a start but I'm not sure if he's ready yet like he is what 19 so little teasers 20 minutes at the end of each game I think will do D Dean Williams the world of good uh, Rory Gaffney as well very very impressed with him when he came on he played on the right wing which I think suited him he was very good there so yeah, it's a tough one, but I'm going to go with Aaron Green to start against St. Pat's Athletic. So for my score prediction for this match, I'm going to say 3-1 to Shamrock Rovers. I think we'll score early on, then concede, Pat's will equalise, and then score two goals in the second half to win the game. I'm going to say Green to get one, I'm going to say McInef to get one, and I'm going to say Greenberg to get one. If I get any one of them right, I'll be happy. If I get every single one right... Um, I will upload every day for a week if I get every one of them right and the score prediction. But yeah, let me know your score prediction down below. Am I right? Am I going to be wrong? We'll have to wait and see. Just going to talk about a couple of subs that I think will come on. Obviously, Dylan Watts, I think, will come on for Graham Burke in around 60 minutes, 70 minute. Because, um, yeah, Graham Burke won't last full game, which can't, like he does put in a lot of effort. So, um, yeah, Dylan Watts coming on for Graham Burke, great replacement. But also, I think Ronan Finn does tire out nowadays, so... He'll still give 100%, but I think the fresh legs down the right wing are handy, and I think we'll be bringing on Reese Marshall at the same time of 
as um, Dylan Watts and Reese Marshall. What like how we? I I'm pretty sure we got him on a free and what a signing he's been. Like yeah, I, I think he started one game this season and that was away to Waterford where he scored a beauty into the top corner. But I think Reese Marshall. I don't know if he's ready to start again. I haven't seen him play a, f- a full game yet, but. When he came on against Derry, once again, he changed the game. Getting up and down that right wing-back's plot, I think he has to feature this game. So I'm going to say he's going to come on for Finn about 60-70 minutes again. Also, Gaffney, I think, will come on for... Could be Jack Byrne. Jack Byrne does tire out. So I'd say Jack Byrne will come on for Gaffney. Gaffney will play right wing. And also, Dean Williams will probably come on for Aaron Green. Just to add a bit of fresh legs. Obviously, he can make five subs now. Uh, Frugia will probably come on for Danny Lafferty. That seems to be the, the subs we're making. Uh, I'd also like to talk about Thomas Alou for a second. I, know. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. But uh, Rovers played Wexford Utes. I'm, I think it was Wexford Utes today. And uh, Thomas Alou scored again. And he scored two in two games. Uh, but like, what a player he is. We think Thomas Alou could. I know he's probably tired from today's match. But I'd say he might feature on the bench one in the upcoming games. And I think he's well worth a shot. Uh, quick striker very quick very physical as well i think he's what rovers need at the moment give him a shot see what he's like but currently for the shamrock rover b team or two team uh he's doing really well for them so maybe we could see thomas lewis feature also kevin zeffi he's been drawing a lot of attention from football clubs all over the world uh inter milan are t- the the main ones that are looking for him so imagine rovers players going to inter milan it's just great for the League of Ireland, let alone Rovers, but the League of Ireland in general shows that, you know, as as your man Sheardon said during the week, or yesterday actually, in the Dundalk versus Warford match, saying no wonder the Warford players are in this league, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pub league, it's a farmer's league, he said something like that, I don't know the word by word stuff, I'll need to look into that a bit more, but we've got players going to Inter Milan and he's saying it's a pub league, I mean, if, if you've got players going to Inter Milan, it's not a pub league. And just let alone that, it's not a pub league. I think he is going to get uh, sacked, definitely, I think. Um, whether he gets a suspension or a ban, because like, the way he talked about his players was disgraceful. But I won't get into that video. Irish uh, Irish Footy Vlogs did a video on that. I would recommend watching it. Very insightful. I've only watched the first five minutes. going to watch it while I'm editing this. But yeah, he, he's, uh, I need to look at that more. Before I can speak about it fully, that'll be on this week in the League of Ireland, which will be out in the next two days, maybe Monday, Tuesday. I'll wait until the, the fixtures, uh, the matches this weekend are out. But that will be the end of this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I enjoy making this, so if you do enjoy, please leave a like, show me your support video. Can we hit 30 likes? That's that's what I'm going to ask for today. I think we got 29 in the last one, so if we can hit 30 today, that will be massive for me. Thank you very much. Uh, as I said earlier, 57% of the viewers aren't subscribed. So if you could subscribe, that would be great. I want to try and get 2k by the end of the year. I know that's going to be tough without the Rovers games, but we're going to try. Like, well, why wouldn't we try? Um, tell your friends to subscribe, share the video, put it on your social media, whatever you'd like. And yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.